Um, thank you, uh, Chairman Corker, Ranking Member Cardin. Thank you, Secretary Tillerson, for your service and the chance to be with you again. We'll be together later today in an appropriations subcommittee. So uh, in this context, I'll focus on some uh, narrow questions that are about State Department functioning and authorization, if I might. Uh, let me just first more broadly say, uh, my predecessor in the seat, uh, former Vice President Biden, often said, uh, don't tell me what you value, show me your budget, and I'll tell you what you value. And I am uh, gravely concerned that the proposed uh, deep cuts to development assistance and diplomacy um, suggest we don't value diplomacy and development as tools of foreign policy at a time when we badly need them and need more of them. Uh, I think uh, the growing threat we've seen, uh, the attack on our democracy by Russia, the destabilizing acts of North Korea, their nuclear program, and uh, the world's worst humanitarian and refugee crisis since the Second World War, uh, call for us um, to invest more in diplomacy and development, not to dramatically cut it, but I'll save the rest of that for the appropriations hearing this afternoon. Um, I understand from your testimony you're nearly done conducting a review um, of the whole State Department. Um, how soon can we expect nominations for the six regional bureaus? I'm concerned about um, some of the difficulty in moving forward key nominations. Uh, we're at about I would say the 50% mark in terms of undersecretaries, assistant secretaries, in terms of people that have been identified, names are actually being submitted so they can begin to work their way through uh, the White House PPO process, but also for a lot of people, they have to get this paperwork behind them, and I would tell you that is no small challenge. Uh, as I check on the status of various people we have uh, recommended and nominated to the White House, what I'm finding is more often than not, it's the paperwork that is slowing them down. Um, in my own case, I had to hire eight people to help me get mine done. Most people can't afford to hire eight people to help them get their paperwork done, so it takes a very long time. Uh, but we're about 50% of the way through, and we have other names that are in process. Uh, what we're doing, we try to get the candidate list of people we think are uh, would be useful to talk to down to a couple and then we actually interview them face to face and then make a decision and submit them. So this is a, a pretty active process. It's one I sit down with the people that are helping me coordinate it about every 10 days just to see where are we, make decisions on other people. If we're hearing feedback, we've talked to folks, maybe they don't want to do it after all. So it's moving and that's about where we are within the, the State Department and the bureaus. It is uh, my hope and expectation, Mr. Secretary, that we'll work on a bipartisan basis to confirm qualified candidates who come forward. I'm concerned about the impact uh, on our embassies in a lot of places in the world that may not be top of the news, but that need an assistant secretary to help coordinate policy. As I've traveled recently, uh, traveled to Uganda with uh, Chairman Corker not too long ago, uh, traveled to Vietnam with uh, Senator McCain recently, uh, I make my best efforts to visit with mid-level uh, foreign service officers and with the civil service folks who really run the department. And I'm concerned about the impact on morale of these proposed cuts. Um, one specific concern I've also got is about diversity. Uh, as part of the hiring freeze, I understand state has frozen the accession for all current Wrangell and Pickering fellows. Uh, and last week, all those current fellows were told these classes were on hold indefinitely. Uh, and this is one of the premier accession programs in the Foreign Service and has served as a, a key tool for improving diversity in the ranks of FSOs. Um, these actions taken to freeze the program, um, to me, uh, could indicate a disturbing lack of attention to the importance of diversity. What's your plans for these programs and um, how do we uh, move forward on diversity initiatives um, taken by previous administrations that are worthy of continued effort? Well, I'll follow up on it, uh, Senator, but I don't think we've frozen the Wrangell and Pickering programs uh, in terms of people that are in process. We're, we're continuing, and we're going to continue to take uh, applicants as well. But let me follow up with you because I don't think uh, there's a, a full freeze in place. On My understanding those. is they're being asked to make very difficult choices in terms of seeking employment elsewhere while they wait for the next uh, opportunity for an entry-level class. and. Uh, you can imagine how someone uh, with a lot of skill and ability would find it quite difficult uh, to go take another job while waiting an indeterminate period uh, for an opening in the State Department. Um, in April, uh, I was one of a number of senators uh, on appropriations who pressed for additional money for emergency funds to address famine conditions in Nigeria, South Sudan, Somalia, and Yemen, where there's roughly 20 million people at risk of starvation. Uh, and the congressional budget justification accompanying your FY18 request notes unusually high carryover funds. Um, I think the estimate was $1.3 in IDA funds. 
Um, why weren't these funds uh, obligated in the year they were appropriated by Congress, which was 16 and 17? And what is your longer term goal? I'm concerned about impoundment and whether or not these funds, which are critically needed to address famine, uh, might instead be reprogrammed or returned as unobligated balances. Well, first, let me thank the Congress for the big plus up in 2017 in recognition, as you point out, of some serious challenges around the world. I think, uh, Senator, our intention is to get that deployed in a way that the food shows up, the relief shows up where it, it is uh, needed. I think what you're seeing is how difficult it is to execute on some of these areas. And so having the money, having the funds are certainly appreciated and needed, but then we have to be able to deliver working with other aid agencies uh, and working with the situation on the ground to have the aid reach those most in need. Our expectation, as we've reflected, just wanting to be com completely transparent with everyone, is that we're, we are pushing that out as quickly as we can effectively do that, but that we are going to have some carryover as a result of the plus up. I think when we get, a, get around, it's a broader budget uh, question as to, you know, it is difficult to execute a $55 billion budget for the organization. And so the, the statement that, that show me your funding and I'll show you your level of commitment, I do not agree with. Um, funding does not equal results. Show me your results and I'll tell you your commitment. And that's what we're trying to get the focus in the State Department is what are the results? And then I'll tell you what I need to deliver on those results, You're giving me a pot of money and suggesting that that's, that confirms our success and our commitment is just simply, uh, I have to take exception to that. I've never had that experience anywhere. Mr. Secretary, we may share with you that um, once money is obligated, we also have an obligation to spend it in the most efficient way possible. Um, I don't think this is an either-or conversation. I think uh, the chairman and I have worked hard to try and find ways to improve the efficiency of delivery of food assistance, and having this funding in the IDA accounts I believed was a way that it would be streamlined and move forward more efficiently. I didn't mean to suggest that simply spending proves our values. Spending efficiently yeah. is what proves our values. Cutting without a reasonable justification at a time of record famine, I also have some difficulties with. I look forward to our further conversation this afternoon about how we can be more efficient and effective in our support of development and diplomacy. And, and, I, and I agree with the delivering through the IDA program. We believe is also much more effective as well.